Hello Gators, this is 6-6 -6, Conditions of Special Parallelograms, Day 1. I can identify rhombuses, rectangles, and squares by the characteristics of their diagonals. Let's take a look at this parallelogram. This parallelogram has diagonals that are perpendicular. Let's see if that will help us identify a special uh, parallelogram. So uh, we know that in parallelograms, diagonals bisect each other. So those would be cut in half and these would be cut in half. And uh, we know that we have per, uh, uh, the diagonals are perpendicular. This is going to allow us to say that each, each one of these triangles is congruent. So this triangle side, angle, side, this triangle side, angle, side, and so on. So these are all congruent by side, angle, side. Now once the triangles are congruent, you can give me uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And you can tell me that AB is congruent to CB I should put uh, three tick marks to distinguish it, which is congruent to CD, which is congruent to AD. When I can say all the sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then it must be a rhombus. So anytime you see a parallelogram with diagonals that are perpendicular, you can say it's a rhombus. And uh, here is the um, theorem. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Let's take a look at this situation. Notice that these two, uh, um, this diagonal is bisecting this angle and bisecting this angle. So these two triangles are going to be congruent by, uh, this is the uh, reflexive side, they're going to be congruent by angle, side angle. And once it, uh, uh, they're congruent, we can say FG, this side, will um, has rigid motion to FG and we have GH congruent to JH so these two are congruent but remember this is a parallelogram so we know opposite sides are congruent so FJ this opposite side right here will be congruent to this opposite side which is GH so that forces everything to be congruent and if all the sides are congruent it ends up being a rhombus And here's the theorem. If the diagonal of a parallelogram bisects the two angles of the parallelogram, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. We're going to be able to get those four congruent sides. Now let's talk about a uh, figure here. This is a uh, parallelogram, and the diagonals end up being congruent. These are congruent diagonals. The little congruent symbol is missing. So uh, I'm looking at this triangle right here. I call it X, W, Z, and I'm looking at this triangle right here, uh, Y, W, Z, and I know that X, Z, that's this, I'm gonna put three here, is congruent to W, Y here. So these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So that means this angle, I'm gonna call it angle one, and angle two are congruent. Angle one is congruent to angle two, this is angle one right here. Angle one is congruent to angle two. Now I also know this is a parallelogram and I know that um, consecutive angles are supplementary. So I know that angle one plus angle two is equal to 180. Now the only way that two angles can be congruent and they add up to 180 is if each angle is 90. That's the only way that could work. So now I know this is not just any old angle, it is a right angle. And once I get a right angle, I can say that is a rectangle. So knowing that the diagonals are uh, congruent means that I'm gonna be able to get a rectangle. Okay, and that's what the theorem says. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. All right, let's take a look for the following parallelograms, choose the best name. So it looks to me like uh, two sides are congruent, right here, consecutive sides. So this is gonna be seven, um, remember this is a parallelogram, so opposite sides are congruent. And then this is 17. Well, this has to be 17 right here. So now I know this is a rhombus. Now, then it says find the value. So I know this must be a right angle because that's what happens in a rhombus. This is eight, so this is eight. And so now I have a right triangle, a squared plus b squared 
equals c squared. So I know a squared, and I know one of the sides is y, and then this is 17. So this is going to be 64 plus y squared is equal to uh, 17 squared is 289. Now I'm going to subtract 64. And that answer is 225. And if I take the square root of both sides, the answer is 15. So I got uh, z to be 17. Um, y is 15, and the other side will have to be 15 as well. So x will be 15. So I think I found all my parts. Okay, now I'm looking here. This is a parallelogram, and I see this little right angle here. So officially, it is a rectangle. Okay, and I know that in a rectangle, this is a right angle. And so this is a right triangle. So I'm going to do uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So that's going to be 7 squared plus 24 squared equals c squared. And uh, when I add those two together, that's 49 plus uh, 24 squared. That answer will be 625 equals c squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and that will be 25. So z will be 25. Now we're going to take the number 25 and divide it in half in all of these little pieces right here. Let me change things here. So this, this piece will be 12.5, and this side will be 12.5, and this side will be 12.5, and this side will be 12.5 because we're cutting it in half. So uh, y is 12.5 and x is 12.5. And here's a summary of what we know so far. And if you see a parallelogram where the diagonals are perpendicular, you know it's a rhombus. If you see that one diagonal is bisecting opposite angles, we can say it's a rhombus. And if you find a parallelogram where the diagonals are congruent, or they look like this, where all the half pieces are all the same, that makes them congruent, then we can say it's a rectangle.